Hi guys, the Angie Bells, my fairy treasures. Okay, you guys, I am now working on. Let me see if I can get this any. I guess it needs to be right there. I'm working on mixed media Christmas gifts for my crafty friends. So, this is what we're making. And we're going to be making different things every week for the next two or three weeks. And I will come on and show you what I'm working on and, you know, maybe give you some ideas too. Okay, what we're making right now is stuffed envelopes, and I'm making the envelope first, the mixed media stuffed envelope. So I use um, two file folders to make it, and then I do a mixed media thing on it. So this is the cover here. You open it up, open the envelope up, and then you can stuff things, right? And I used um, dilutions on the whole outside of this, which I think came out really pretty for the mixed media part, right? We still need to do the inside. That's why it looks crazy on the inside, which we're gonna do, which I'm gonna do with you guys um, here in a second. But what I wanna show you is how do you make this? Okay, here's the, here's the, you know, stuffed envelope here where you put your goodies and then <coughs> the flap. And we're going to stuff these with all kinds of stuff. We're going to make some mixed media art cards. We're going to put mixed media art cards in here. We'll put all kinds of stuff in here for our crafty friends, okay? For Christmas presents. So, what you need to do is you need to take two file folders. You need the file folders that have the hinge on them. Not the normal ones, but this kind. See? It has the hinge on both sides. Okay, then you need a regular um, a regular file folder, just the plain old regular ones with no hinge. I used to make these by tearing these apart, the regular ones, and putting a hinge in here. But why do all that when you can just buy the ones with the hinge? Make sure you guys are seeing that, right? Okay, so you take this and you just go like this, bam. So now here is the front. And this is your flap, and it has to be attached, and it has to be cut, which we'll do. And then we need to glue. The, we need to cut this, and then glue this onto the back, right? So let's go through and get the cuts done. It's very quick and easy. This is the front of the flap, right? So we're gonna cut that part off. If you want, you can leave it, but I don't want to. Hopefully, you're seeing all of this. Let me check my camera. Okay, so I have my paper cutter out. You may not be able to see everything, but you're seeing enough of it. And I'm just cutting to cut that edge off. If you don't have a paper cutter, just a second, you guys, I'm... I gotta rearrange things to make sure everything's even. If you don't have a paper cutter, I highly suggest you buy one. Now, I don't tell you guys to buy everything. A lot of times I tell you there's a, you know, there's a million ways. But with your tools, these are the things I would definitely invest in. This will cost you maybe 20 bucks, And um, use a coupon, you'll buy it for $10. If, you're, if you go to Tuesday morning, they always seem to have stuff like that. Okay, now we just want to cut the other edge off of here for the back. And you're just cutting that little edge off here, okay? So someone's going to ask me the exact measurements. It doesn't matter, okay? Just cut that little edge off. And actually, the fact that I just said you don't have to measure even is less stress. Okay, so we're going to put this all back on like that. See? Now how you have your flap here, see? And when you open it up, then you have your little pocket in here, right? opens up like this so you can see all right and then turn it around to the back and there we go and then you'll glue that down okay you glue all this down we're gonna glue all this down with the hot glue gun now the reason I use the hot glue gun is because you're, you're gonna be wetting this you're using wet media if you use double stick tape it'll probably you know your double stick tape won't work anymore so I suggest hot glue hot glue this hot glue this hot glue this Turn it around and um, yeah, that's it. So turn it to the back, get your hot glue out. You need to put hot glue all the way around here and then 
glue that down. So now you have your flap attached to this whole thing, right? And then you still have your opening here for your stuffed envelope. There's one other thing I would do, and you don't have to, but I just think it look, makes it look more professional. Here's a corner chomper. This is probably a $30 tool. Use a coupon, spend about $15 on it. Now, you can get corner chompers for like 5 or $6. The reason I like this one, though, this goes through cardboard. It goes through... Um, it goes through um, cardboard. It goes through. Um, let me just start doing this. It goes through cardboard and there's that other type of board. Chipboard. That's the word. There we go. Leather. You can do so many different types of things. So that's why I like this. But if you don't want to spend that much, just get yourself a corner chomper at any of the craft stores. This. Oh, and I didn't say this one is We Are Memory Keepers. This is a good brand. Um, on my cutter, I think I got a Fiskars, and any of these things, if you don't know, most of you guys do know, but you know, there's always new people watching. You can get this at Michael's, Joanne's, Hobby Lobby, whichever. That's what that looks like. So you get a good look at it. We are memory keepers. Okay. Because I remember when I first got into this crafting world, people had all these tools, and I'm like, what the hell is that? How do you use that paper cutter? And if you don't know how to use your paper cutter, like when you really need to, do, when you do need a measure, um, watch a video and you'll learn how to use that paper cutter. When you need to take an inch off or a half inch off, or you need to measure something to five to six, five to six inches, there's a whole grid on your paper cutter. See, there's a whole grid one through 11 on here. Okay. So you can figure all that out. So watch a video so you can learn how to deal with your paper cutter. If you don't understand like how to measure, like okay, everybody pretty much knows one, two, three, four inches. Everyone usually knows about a half, but you may not know where three quarters is. You may not know. So you need to know all those type of things. Ask somebody to teach you that if you don't know. So, because there was a period where I didn't know the in-betweens. Like I knew a half, I knew a quarter, I knew three quarters, but how do I know these little lines in through here? Okay, I'm not going to do it a lesson on that now. But get with somebody in your family who understands that stuff because there's always those people and they'll tell you. Okay. My husband's the one who told me. Okay. Um, so now you, you know how to make that part. All right. So I'm going to put this down. And we are going to... We did the outside, right? We're going to do the inside now. But you know what? I don't want too much to get on to this outside. So I need to protect... I'm working on my glass mat, and you guys, this will come completely clean once I just hit it with water and wipe everything off. I just don't want to uh, clean it yet because I'm going to get more stuff on it. But just like kind of what I'm trying to do, just like when we work in an art journal, I want to protect the other side that we just did, see, or that I just did. So I am going to put wax paper down just to kind of protect that other side. Okay. All right. So, what I have here is I have Dilutions Bubblegum, Bubblegum Pink, I have Funky Fuchsia, and I have Crushed Grape, and I'm going to use one more, uh, Vibrant Turquoise. These are all like my favorite kind of colors. I love this. I love Dilution sprays. They just had a great sale on this, and I got them for like $2.50 a piece. Something like that. It was fabulous. Also, I might use, instead of the regular Funky Fuchsia here and there, or the Vibrant, uh, what is this? Bubblegum Pink. Instead of this Bubblegum Pink in certain areas, this one has a little bit of shimmer in it. I'll use that one. And it has plenty of color in it, too. And when you use them, don't shake them up like that. She said always take it to the side and go like that. And that way, the shimmer does not get into the straw and you get clogged. So that's how she says to do it. And to store it like that. Okay, so let's get started. First thing we do is we need to do some spray it with some water. Kind of a finer mist is better than a big heavy one, but it's up to you. And you guys are like going, "What's all that mess?" I clear. Oh, excuse me. I cleaned off my stencils and whatever was on the on the mat got on here, which is perfect. It adds to more design. So. You never worry if something gets on the other side, it adds to it. But since I already did the other side, I kind of want to keep it as clean as possible. All right, let's start. Big puddles of color. And we're going to be working on two at a time. And you're going to understand what I'm saying in a second. Because you're like, what? Oh, 
let's use the shimmer one here. Oh my God, it doesn't work. Okay, we're not gonna use the shimmer because that bubblegum shimmer is not working. What the hell? Okay, so we want to, oh actually, okay. Let's take the bubblegum over here. That, that's a brand new uh, shimmer spray. It's not even like it's clogged. It's like it doesn't even want to move at all. That's flipping weird. Okay, so what I want to do to do two page to do two at one, uh, two for one. I have this other one that I worked on, so we're just gonna put this right on top, and so you get a two for. If you're working in a book, like in an art journal, you would um, get another page from the art journal, like rip a page out of your art journal, and then go like this and start another page. Or you can get a whole other art journal if you have a second art journal, and just put it right on top. And this helps you just juice everything up. Juice everything up. Get everything up and start another page. So now we're getting two pages done at once. Okay, check that out. Awesome. I am going to use my paper towel, you can't see it, and kind of just hit it a little bit over here. So get some of the Oh that turned out pretty. Check that out. Now we will have to hit it here a couple here and there, but at least our next one is already started. Um, I have another one, this one right here, let's lay this one, this is another one that we're working on, let's lay that on top to sop up some more goodiness. If I wanted to, I could get tags right now and sop up tags and get some different tags started. Perfect. So see, we got something else started. Yay! And it looks a little messy, but it's not. And let's sop up the rest with some paper towel. Okay. Very good. All right. I am going to just clean my mess up here. Now, I could clean up my mess by sopping all of this up, but I'm not going to. Um... Like I could go around here and, you know, use tags and sop up the rest of this. But for the sake of time, let's just get this cleaned up. Because that's the messiest part of the whole thing, which I love the mess. I think it's fun. Messes are fun because they let you be a kid again. Where you're not worried about making a mess. Okay. So let's bring this back. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a thing called ghosting technique. And I'm going to use this honeycomb stencil. And you put this on here. I love the ghosting technique. Let me grab some paper towels. The other ones I just used are just... Those are definitely goners. When Di uh, Diane Reevely is the one who um, is the artist who represents these products, she uses the whole... She calls it a... What does she call this? I don't know what she calls it anyway. A kitchen roll. There's just a paper towel roll. She uses the whole roll like that. Which I could do, but I'm not going to right now. Okay, so let's place this. This is called ghosting. You just take a regular spray bottle of water. And what happens is you're um you're uh, releasing some of the color out in pattern form, right? So let it sit there for a second and let it activate the watercolor. And then just take your paper towel like this. And it brings some color up and it's gonna leave this honeycomb design in here, which is cool. It adds a, another dimension of design. Oh, I love it. Let's do the same thing over here. Let it sit there for just a second. A little bit 
of a finer mist, not super fine, but a finer mist is better than a real heavy spray. Okay, and then let's take our paper towel. Okay, there we go. Awesome! And I'm also going to... Now, you could take this and go into another journal or another page or another anything or another um, stuffed envelope and... Um, put some of that design on there but for the sake of time we're not going to okay now with our paper towel let's just go back over all this again just dry this up now before we start our next step we need to do a little bit of drawing a little clean up and what's so nice about this glass mat is you guys want I spray it with water um, it'll just come completely clean. It's really fabulous. Okay. If you don't want to hear this, fast forward. If I'm going to dry this really quick. But, oh, and then you're going to see. You see the honeycomb as it's already come up? Isn't that so cool? That's ghosting, you guys. So exciting. But let me need to dry this a little bit before we go to the next step. Okay, we're not looking for bone dry. We're just looking for, you know, not soaking wet. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take those same colors. You always want to work with the same colors you just used so that this looks like a background, right? So we're going to use the same color we just used, and we're going to start spraying through stencils. So we're just trying to get beautiful layers. So our first layer was just color, right? Second layer was the ghosting, and that added these, like, honeycomb. Isn't that just gorgeous? So, I like to kind of match up my colors in that same area, and I'll kind of mix things up too, but I definitely like to put the same colors, like I'm spraying through this stencil, the same color, the same color over that even looks different, doesn't it? Because you're spraying it through a stencil now. Very pretty. Pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, I don't want to waste this, that's a lot of good color. Um... <clears throat> Damn it, my file folder is behind me on the floor. Just a second. So this is going to help start this page, see? I've been doing it already. Let me get some more paper towels. And just go like this. And that just kind of helps you so that you clean up your stencil and you start in something else and you don't have to. Now, will I spray all this white space? Yeah, I'll spray all this white space, but this will be added in there as part of, as, you know, as a head start on your next thing. So, let me set this aside. Let's do our, oh, let's do our next stencil. Um, next. We're not using this, we're not using that. All right, so now I'm gonna use this stencil. And I like to specifically use smaller stencils. Um, I like to use smaller stencils. Um, for ghosting, I like to use a little bit larger stencils. You can use ghosting, use anything, but it gives you that big open space, right? And then I like to use smaller stencils at this point, not real big ones. You'll kind of see as we go along. 
Okay, that looks good there. So now let's go back to this here. And we'll go right here. Put that design here. I'll put that over here. And I know it looks crazy now, you guys, but it won't. It just gives us a nice head start to our next envelope that we have to that we have to um, do some mixed media on. Okay, next one. This is a Diane Reevely stencil. Let me see what the time situation is. Okay, this is a Diane Reevely stencil. Isn't that cool? Uh, love it. Okay, and then what color are we using next? Let's use some purple. I'm going to use there we go. That looks awesome. I'm using the purple right in the purple section because the purple can get really dark. So I'm going to try to keep the purple on purple so we don't get things too dark. Um, but there never is to this or to that. It just depends on what you want to do. Okay, this is the other side that I've already started doing this colored stuff on. Let's get rid of it on here. Now you could also keep uh, an art journal right beside you and be putting this right into an art journal page and that starts another art journal page. But since I have all of these um, these envelopes made out of these file folders, I might as well start new, get a head start on my next file folder. Okay, then we have this stencil, okay. And I have left over here that I haven't used. I have bubblegum pink, so let's do some bubblegum pink. Okay, and we're going to put that right there. There we go. There we go. And wipe the rest of that off. Okay. And I think this is good. I think I'm liking this. I kind of feel like there needs to be a little bit more design there. And let's use this stencil. Um, maybe some funky fuchsia right there. Yeah. Oh, cool. I uh, love that. I'm trying to see if I want to put any more of that anywhere else. Again, let's bring this back, put that there. Start a new page. Start to put some design, get some more design started on here. Okay. All right. And then let's just move some of this ink off of here. Okay, so I'm loving how this is looking. So we got a nice bunch of layers. So we've done so many great layers. Um, we have done just the color alone, just the sprays alone, right? Then we did ghosting, and then we did a bunch of different stencils, right? And in about five minutes, you guys, um, this video will cut off. Just go to part two, okay? Um, what am I doing? Oh. The next step I want to do is if I had, okay, Di, um, Dilutions does have white spray, but I don't have any more white left. I only had one bottle of it, and I think, I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, but, so if you have Dilutions white spray, you could just spray it through a stencil, but I don't have that. There's this thing called Punchinella. It's what's left over after you punch out sequins. Isn't this cool? You can buy it, Punchinella. You can buy this on eBay. Okay, so I'm going to use my Punchinella as a stencil, and I'm going to use white paint because I feel like we need some white on here. So we're just going to use some white acrylic paint. And what's kind of cool is the um, it lifts up the um, these dilution sprays and kind of takes that um, white paint 
if you do it over turquoise, it'll make it look kind of white turquoisey. So it'll bring up some of the color, which looks cool. Okay, so now we're just gonna take a makeup sponge, a little white acrylic paint, and just messily, not anything specific, just do this. Another one I want to use, I have this one too, and it is a Diane Reeve. Oh, I don't know if it is or not. There's this one right here. I'm going to put some of that right down here. That looks cool. Just a couple of bigger, like, bubbles. And I think, I know Diane Reevely or Dilutions. Diane Reevely or Dilutions, same thing. Diane's the artist who represents this line. It's called Dilutions, um, for those who don't know. Um, I think this is her stencil. If not, she has a stencil like this. Very cool. Love it. Okay, the next thing I want to do... Do I need that? I don't know if I'll need that anymore or not. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more white paint. We're going to do some white splatters, which is fairy dusting. We're going to fairy dust the piece. We are not... Usually, I like to also um, take my script stamp, but um, I don't want to do it. It's making it pretty dark. And... Um, so I don't want to make anything darker, so I'm not script stamping on this piece. I know you guys are like, um, miracle. So now I'm just taking some acrylic paint, throwing some water on here. And we're going to fairy dust this piece. Fairy dust! Make sure you guys are still with me. Fairy dust! Okay, that was a big splatter right there. Oh, well, I ain't gonna worry about it. Love me some fairy dust. Oh, okay, perfect. I don't know what that was. That wasn't, I thought that was a big splatter, but we're good. Now, one thing, because this is a glass mat I'm working on top of, I'm going to take this aside here, just take a paper towel here, and wipe up all these splatters. Because if I do let those dry, I mean, I can get those off, you know, but then I have to kind of scrape them off. Right now, with a dry paper towel, they'll just come right off. I don't want those little bumpies on here. Okay. All right. So now this is where we're at. Okay. So now we got the inside done. There's the outside, right? Okay, so now we need to, um, it, at this point too, if I wanted to, I could do stamping on top of here for more to add to this background. If I wanted to, I could get my, um, I could get my paint pens out and do some stuff with my paint pens, um, but I'm not going to. Okay, 
So, this is, there we go. This is the, um, the top of this here. Okay, but I'm going to bring that up for now. So that I'm in frame. Okay, so now what I want to do is we need a focal point, right? So, here we used a, um, making sure this is not getting ruined. Okay. We used a pair of stencil here, and we used another pair of stencil here. So, we're going to use some more, the same pair of stencils in the inside. Okay, let me look inside. I love these pair of stencils. They are just, just fabulous. I picked them up for $2 a piece at Tuesday morning, like a few years ago. Like this one says, Cafe Paris, number seven, Rue something. Love it. This one says, Paris, number nine, Rue Le Ver. I know I'm not saying these things right. This is a um, stencil that looks very like something from Paris. Um, hopefully you're seeing these stencils. Then this one says, Pastre. Le Petit, who the hell knows, but I just love the look of it all. Okay. And I also have these cool keys, which I might use. We'll see. But i got to first decide on which one of these I'm going to use on the inside of this. This is the top up here if I want to use that Paris up here. This is the flap. Okay, get over there. Just a second, people. I'm lining things up. I'm checking things out. Yeah, I'm going to use this Paris number nine on the flap, on the inside of the flap. Make sure you guys are still there. Yes, you are. So here we go. We need a uh, black acrylic paint. And I already have some prepped on this plate. I am awesome. <laughs> because I prepped my black paint. Okay, you guys are like, whatever. So I took, I'm taking a makeup sponge with a little bit of paint, not too, too much paint. And I found what really works and it goes a lot faster is just to rub. I used to pounce, which you can pounce if you want, but just a nice little rub. Sometimes I pounce a little bit here and there. I kind of peek to look and see. Yep, that looks good. But it goes faster if you can just rub it on. Basically, smear. How is you guys' Christmas decorating coming along? I'm so excited. I am done decorating for Christmas. 